In 2015, I watched the Giro d'Italia on TV. It was the first grand tour that I'd seen from start to finish as I'd just gotten into road cycling and it was also the uh, year that I got my first uh, carbon road bike. I didn't know much about the course or the teams or the riders, but as the race went on, it became quite clear to me that Alberto Contador was the strongest climber in the field. In the final week of the race, I was fascinated by the mechanical problem that he had at the base of the Mortarolo climb, and then truly amazed at his powerful ascent of this mountain, passing rider after rider like they were standing still. Right there and then I became a Contador fan, and I decided that one day I was also going to conquer the Mortarolo. Fast forward two years to 2017, my wife and I have booked a cycling holiday with Trek Travel, riding three days in the Dolomites and also three days in the Italian Alps. This was our first overseas cycling tour and it was taking on some pretty big days in the mountains. The Stelvio Pass, which we did on day four, was particularly amazing, partly because it was also on my wife's 40th birthday. <laughs> but for me personally, uh, the final day was the one that I will remember most vividly. I had studied the Mortarolo, which was my only target for the day, and I knew that it was a roughly 11 kilometer climb and an 11% gradient, much steeper than anything that I'd tackled in the past. My only goal was to get to the top as fast as I could without stopping. It was the only thing that I'd given any thought to for the day. I don't actually remember much about the Mortarolo climb because I was focused on getting my best possible time, but I do remember riding past and momentarily admiring the Pantani Memorial and then higher up on the climb, riding past uh, some dogs on the side of the road. As I crested the top of the mountain, I have to admit to being a little underwhelmed because there's not much up there other than a few street signs, uh, quite unlike the caravan of bicycles and motorbikes and cars that are all gathered at the top of the Stelvio. Nonetheless, I had made it. I was happy with my time, I was happy that I'd given it my all, and I was very ready to coast down the other side into our lunch stop. The descent of the Mortarolo was uh, pretty relaxing. I think I freewheeled most of the way down. Uh, we coasted into the uh, valley road and we stopped in at a traditional Italian uh, trattoria uh, for a hearty lunch. I stuffed myself full of pasta and meatballs and I think I had a beer because uh, I figured that I was done for the day and I knew that there'd be quite a long wait until we got to dinner. I vaguely knew that there was more riding scheduled for the day, but my plans had extended no further than the Mortarolo, so I was not too concerned. As we left the cafe, uh, I went up to Jason, who is uh, one of the two Trek travel tour guides for this trip. Uh, I explained to him that I was done for the day and I was going to sit out the rest of the ride uh, in the van and that I needed to put my uh, domane up on the roof. But I will never forget what happened next. Jason had a different plan. So Jason looks deep into my eyes, puts his hand on my shoulder, and with 110% conviction, he says to me, Adrian, you got this. And so the decision was made. I was going up the Garvia. So at this point, I'm starting to regret the massive influx of pasta into my belly and starting to wonder just how long and steep this second mountain climb is gonna be because I had given it zero thought until now. However, I just followed the wheels of the riders in front of me as we continued along the valley floor until we started the ascent of the second climb. And then reality set in. This was a big mountain, really big. And I was exhausted because I'd spent all my energy on the Mortarolo trying to get my best time and I had nothing left to give. I'm sure I'm not the only punter that's found themselves in this uh, same position starting the second big climb of the day, but I was very thankful to have Jason uh, cycling alongside with me, keeping me motivated. Jason had a very simple and successful tactic, which was just to keep me engaged in conversation about my work as a physio, uh, my life in, the, in my home city of Adelaide, and of course we talked about the tour down under. And even though it was hard to maintain a conversation while my heart rate was so high, I realised that while I was focused on talking, 
I was not thinking about all of the pain going on in my legs and in my lungs. The Garvia is a very long climb. It's not as steep as a Mortarolo, but it just keeps going. Jason had other riders to look out for on this climb. So being the uh, super fit guide that he was, he shuttled forwards up to some of the riders that were in front of me and backwards to check on the riders that were behind me to make sure that everyone was coping okay on the climb and were riding safely. When he disappeared and the conversation stopped, I now had time to think about the burning pain in my legs. Now they were completely drained and my breathing, which was deep and taxing. My speed started slowly dropping and I started to slide into a dark mental space. Even in my lowest gearing, I was barely making any progress forwards. I had no leg power left. I was relying purely on cadence alone. Uh, thankfully, the incline remained quite steady and there were no little steep ramps to overcome. The final hurdle for me was a long, dark tunnel uh, in the final few kilometres before the end of the climb. With only my front bike light for illumination, I was starting to get disoriented about my position on the road, whether I was still travelling in a straight line or wavering, and if the road was actually still going up or if it had levelled out. Eventually, thankfully, I reached the end of the tunnel and that darkness gave away to an eerie mountain fog. I could now start to make out in the distance the Trek Travel van that was stationed at the top of the climb, along with some of the other riders who had already finished and were waiting to cheer the rest of us on. With absolutely no resources left, I could barely manage some high fives with the other riders as I got to the top. And I was so thankful to finally climb off the bike, sit down on a bench seat and rest. Now at the top of the Garvia is a little refugio, a little uh, cafe, which is an absolute godsend to weary cyclists. I have got to say that they serve the world's greatest hot chocolates. Just what I needed, just what I was looking forward to. Uh, so I had two. As this was the last day of our Italian mountain cycling tour, and knowing that this was a, a ride, a day on the bike like no other, I decided I was going to collect for myself a little souvenir. It's just a small rock, nothing much, but to me it signifies overcoming all of the pain, the absolute fatigue and the self-doubt that struck that day. This little rock now sits on my study windowsill and whenever I glance at it, I'm inspired because I'm reminded of just how hard I can push myself and that I can achieve anything that I put my mind to. Thanks Trek Travel and thanks Jason.